assumptions for this year as well as anything else laying out our budgeting uh, program for the next uh, few months. Um, in terms of budgets received, and I'll make sure, like I say, before we leave tonight, that figure out the Google Drive access server, we'll make sure they have access to it. Um, but we have received the accountants, assessors, board of selectmen, town clerk, council on aging, uh, dispatch, EMS, fire, historical commission, uh, Holbrook Public Schools, inspectional services, library, other insurance, police, public safety building, town administrator, and tonight we received the treasurer collector. Um, so the public works, um, we'll be anticipating to get that shortly, the, some people on vacation and whatnot. Um, but the, the big chunk of departments, and I'm sure there's some others that are uh, uh, small departments, like I don't think we have veterans maybe. Um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not showing better. So that's, so that's what we're, we're going to work with the town administrator. Uh, I spoke to him earlier tonight. Okay. And, um, and he's been working with the departments to, and he's doing the same thing as we had mentioned in a prior meeting that he's kind of putting the budgets in and kind of making some, uh, some comments for the board of selectmen for their review and, and for ultimate uh, consultation with us. Um, and he couldn't be here tonight. He's in Braintree at a, a swearing in ceremony of the uh, brain, new Braintree mayor and it's a big ceremony so he's there representing uh, Holbrook um, as, a, as a neighbor community <clears throat> uh, but so we've gotten a lot of depart a lot of budgets back which I think is good um, for our meeting next week and we'll jump ahead a second our meeting next week is scheduled for the uh, selectman oversight department as well as services so those include the selectmen, town administrator, town council, animal control, inspectional services, uh, council on aging, public library, recreation, historical, <coughs> celebration, forest, um, and then planning, conservation, building, wiring are all actually part of inspectional services. Um, and then assessors and veterans are also in that January 11th um, bucket. Um, I think that. <coughs> yep. Yeah, so I did, did all the department heads get an invitation to their? I'm assuming they did. Yes. Yeah, so all because I know some people asked. I want to get into who said they were never invited, which we know wasn't. Well, everybody on that list. Speaking with, um, I think we've gotten budgets from most of those mm -hmm. people, other than a, other than a few. And again, speaking with the town administrator tonight, he's working uh, very well. It seems like with all the department heads. There is the subcommittee is meeting with the department heads this Thursday. Um, so speaking to, uh, to Tim, if we wanted to um, allow any of the departments to that don't need to come, if they were going to if they want to meet with the subcommittee on Thursday, um, then do they have to come on the Monday? Uh, and he was going to try to do a good job to get them all there. Yeah. So they're all hearing the same message and all that kind of thing. Um, just looking at the list, obviously, selectmen would be re represented by, uh, by Mr. Gordon, town administrator, town council. Um, animal control, I don't believe we've received the budget yet. So I'd say if, you know, if we don't have a... You don't have a budget either? Uh, not that I'm aware of. So, so okay. somehow it's getting... When it comes to me, it goes to you, so I don't know what's happening. Um, inspectional services, in their budget, they're asking for some change in headcount and... and part-time, full-time kind of thing. So obviously we'd want them to come, come visit us. Um, Council on Aging, I think we want them to come. There's some things there with vehicles and, and we want to make sure that they're on a good path. Uh, library obviously is, is a sizable budget. We want them to, to come visit us specifically. Um, recreation, I know that uh, recreation, historical, celebration, forest, I'd say we're, we're open. Um, mm -hmm. If there's information that they need, think they need to provide, but if they feel that they don't need to come, then then they're okay without coming. Um, especially if they're meeting with the subcommittee on Thursday. If they you know can't make that meeting, then they probably want to come and speak to us at least. But that way, the subcommittee could say this is what historically <coughs> we're looking for, and yeah. you know they want five hundred dollars for a laptop. <laughs> you know. uh, but if they want to come to a public meeting that's going to be aired on cable and they want to talk about it, then we're open to to listen to them, listen to all these departments. Um, other than that, I think that, uh, oh, and veterans, I think veterans, same situation that if they don't feel that they need to come, but they come on Thursday and speak to the subcommittee, then they can probably be, uh, excused. 
is the committee sort of in agreement with that thought process that we're not going to hold it against the departments if uh, you know they don't get Just as long as they that we know that they were informed that they get back and uh, reiterate that they do know that they were invited because mm -hmm. there's a couple on that list that didn't at town meeting that stood up and said we didn't know yeah what, what, what I will do is tomorrow I'll, uh, I'll draft an email for send an email to uh, <coughs> administrator Gordon say identifying those departments being veterans recreation historical celebration forest that um, the if they attend the Thursday meeting with the subcommittee then there is no expectation that they would have to come to, to see us but they are fully invited to come to see us if they want to so to make it clear that uh, if they don't go to the subcommittee on Thursday then an expectation would be that they come to see us on Monday mm -hmm. uh, we want that to meet with at least some members of the Finance Committee uh, at some point in time here being a, a you know looking for funds from the town Thanks. work for everybody yes um, so that is our meeting for next week and then we'd actually have, have some open meetings and stuff, which is good. Um, we don't have very solid revenue numbers yet, as, as is typical of the case. Um, take a step back, our recap, our tax bills, as most people have noticed, probably haven't gone out yet. Uh, there was um, some, there's been some changes at the state level in terms of uh, DOR and how they certify tax rate and how they're processing things, they're doing some more, <clears throat> Streamlining it used to be everything had to go to one central person in one central office and they've sort of relied on a lot more of their regional offices to kind of do a lot more of, of work um, and uh, So this year there was a there was a mistake And uh, there was an accounting mistake on our side, but they didn't catch it um, and so they Certified the rate and then within a couple hours said wait, there's a mistake here and unfortunately the way the the, the statutes are written they can't they're under the impression they can't just come in and say, well, we have to, we have to reset your, your tax rate uh, because it could, the statute kind of ambiguous that once the rate's set, it can't be reset, but it's really, is it that mean the town can't change it or does that mean that they can't change it? So anyway, after a lot of back and forth with the town administrator, with our DOR, with our legislative representatives, we need special legislation um, to allow the DOR to reset the tax rate. So the accounting has been fixed, and it's sort of it's just an accounting mistake that needs to move money from one column to another, if you will. Um, but in order to do that, <clears throat> the legislation has to pass, which we anticipate it will. And uh, Administrator Gordon's been in contact with our legislative leaders to make sure that that happens. And as long as it's passed, the way I understand the legislation is that as long as the legislation is passed and DOR sets the rate by January 31st, the bills would be due within 30 days of the bill issuance, which is important because typically if you get to January and you, don't, you haven't sent the tax bill, they're not actually due until May 1st. So this would still require them to be paid within 30 days of whatever that bill date is. Um, so that's sort of an issue right now. So <clears throat> with that, we don't ha I don't have a good recap that then the recap is sort of the baseline that we use for a lot of our revenue projections, whether it be local receipts and, and many other things that are on that recap, assessor's overlay and so on and so forth. Um, so that along with, if you remember last year, we had difficulty with the cherry sheet, no difficulty. Uh, our, our cherry sheet, our state aid was not as robust as we would have liked. <coughs> uh, and the main driver of that was our, our student enrollment. The big big chunk of our aid is uh, chapter 70 money and because enrollment was off according to the october 1st reporting date that the state uses it caused our revenues to not be as robust as we would have liked we were told last year that that was a an anomaly in terms of that the populations had gone up significantly shortly after that october 1st um, and uh, so that hopefully that bears fruit and that our October 1st reporting this year would be a significant increase over last year, which means that you get uh, all of the, that aid for those excess children that we weren't getting aid for mm -hmm. in the current fiscal year. Um, so that's a, but we don't know that until we'll ho hope to see the governor's budget 
the governor has to publish his, I think, by the last week of January, I believe. Um, and from that, we'll be able because that will use the that's the first report that will use the October first enrollment number and what his ideas are. So it'll give us a good picture on are we looking at a two percent increase in state aid or zero percent, or are we looking at something much better, uh, which will help to alleviate some things. Um, any questions? I'm doing a lot of talking. That's what I do. Is that what you said? <laughs> It's gone on. <laughs> um, one thing to note, I we don't have we haven't I haven't received officially, but um, uh, Administrator Gordon was going to and actually it's probably on Paul's on um, the Treasurer Collector's budget is the retirement figure. <clears throat> uh, so the re our retirement costs are going up uh, over ten percent. Um, it's I think from his number it was over two hundred thousand uh, dollars, which is a Big chunk of our money. Typically, we have maybe five to six hundred thousand dollars in normal growth year over year that's available to spend. So um, it's going to be it's going to be a tight year again. Um, even with if we get you know a, a good state aid figure, good state aid amount. Um, but that's what we're here for, and that's what we'll figure out meeting we, by meeting. Did we find a way? We no, you may have already talked about it because I missed the last meeting. It was the uh, State reimbursement for snow and ice has that been resolved yet? We're we getting money back, or that's going to be part of the recap. I mean, that was a whole. I remember that as being an open issue. That's I know on the um, the state or the board of selectmen approved an amount to be uh, rolled over from or carried over from this year into next year, mm -hmm. and it's the neighborhood of the two hundred fifty thousand dollars. What we had spoken about at town meeting mm -hmm. um, it could be a little more, a little bit less. Right? We really need that recap to understand because that is a number that <coughs> we're starting in the hole right. before we spend a dollar. We have to spend and pay back last year's money. Um, but I don't know in terms of I know that our emergency management director has been very active working with state agencies to try and mm -hmm. account for every dollar we can. But I, as far as I know to this point, no money has still come in, right? Has we got any money from last year's snow, snow and ice problems from the states or feds or anything? So that we'll get all those final numbers as the process goes on. And that's why it's kind of, I don't want to put the card out there too soon and say, based on the budgets we've received, this is the deficit we're looking at. We probably won't have a good picture of that until the beginning of February, okay. um, just based on a couple of departments and the, and the revenues being unknown, uh, significantly unknown at this point. And I don't want to put a number out there and have to backtrack it. Um, Mr. Chairman, when yes. you say that the um, uh, retirement, it, Costs are going to increase by two hundred thousand. Is that uh, dollars we use to pay for existing retirees, or the fact that we're expecting more people to retire, and um, they're the dollars that are going relative to the number of people that are going to retire, or is it for the pension plan that for future retirees? It's for the. Or any of the above, all of the above. It's, it's all of the above. It's the pay, okay. it's, that's our payment. We're assessed from the Norfolk County Retirement Board in amount, and that amount covers anybody that's existing retirees that they're paying out, as well as what your uh, actuarial study is for what your future costs will be. Um, there's a legis state legislation that requires uh, us to be fully funded by some year in 2030 something. Um, it used to be 2032, and then it got moved out a couple years ago with, with tough financial times. Um, but 
that paired with increased retirements, increased um, not as not as robust returns on their investments in the in the studies, have caused us to uh, to have to pay more into it in order to get that fully funded. Uh, I believe it was last year we received information from them that said that we should anticipate the a portion of that. I don't think it's the current. Um, I don't think it's the current people. I think it's paying for the existing ones that aren't funded, if you will, that it was going to go up by 10%. So that portion going up by 10% along with just the normal increases that happen causes it to go up at the, the, into the uh, double digits and, and teens, if you will. Excuse me. Thank you. Um, I was going to see if I... I don't even know if my password is my email. Um, I was going to see if Paul had the actual numbers so we could get away from the theoretical for a moment. But it's, it was 1.6 to 1.8, that kind of thing. <coughs> Are there other questions on the budgets we received or revenue assumptions? Um, the, plan, so the plan when we do get there, of course, is to use like we have typically used um, uh, last year certified um, for local receipts, used last year's certified numbers as a, as a conservative number, um, uh, but a prudent number, um, as well as use, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the full two and a half that we're allowed to use as our baseline and then back off of that if, we, if we're able to. Um, And that's about it for revenues that we really have play with. Um, and we'll, we'll discuss further the stone ice numbers that we want to use. Um, knock on wood that I've only had to see, I think I've only seen plows out in our streets one time um, yeah, so far this season. So um, hopefully that'll, I mean, I know that we've obviously had to spend money already. I think we spent money on a chassis and filling the salt shed and so on and so forth. But um, Fingers crossed that we'll have a, a good year this year. Uh, I know that the, jumping over a second, that we have a new library director. Is a new library director here? Do you want to just say hi tonight? Or, I mean, you're here. I mean, you have to come back next week anyway. You don't get to skip out, but. <laughs> sure. Yeah, please, the, so the people at home can. Even though I don't know what's going can on. I see you flip around. <laughs> 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 Hi, my name is Donald Cologne, and I'm the new library director here in Holbrook. Um, this is my actually my first day, so I get the experience of coming to my first finance committee meeting. Um, and I look forward to working with the board and other committees in town and you know, go in the right direction. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, other question. Oh, there was an issue with our uh, appointment that we made at our last meeting, oh. which was in December. Um, the gentleman that we had appointed. Leo, my, Leon, Lionel LaRoche? Yes. Um, he wasn't a registered voter at the time. Um, he's since been, and you have to be a registered voter to be on the finance committee. He has since registered to vote um, to be clean and clear, I'd like us to take another vote tonight if, it, if the committee would like, so that way we're voting when he is actually eligible to be a member of the Finance Committee, um, although he's not here tonight, but, um, <coughs> but at least then we can get the paperwork right with the town clerk's office and get sworn in and everything for our next meeting. So is there a motion? Make a motion. So moved. Second. Yeah. To yeah. appoint Lionel LaRoche yeah. to the Finance Committee. Sure it was moved and seconded. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Six of us. Six. Six. six of us. Six zero. Sorry, again, I didn't the last two there. meetings. Is this make us a full compliment? This would put us back to nine, correct? That's for no. sure, right? Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> sure. Um, anything else for tonight? It's a pretty pretty easy meeting. Kind of get our feet under us for the new year. Cindy, do we, is there anything that we need to know? Is there anything that we need to know that we should be Thinking about? I thought you knew it. <laughs> yes. Uh, Sound like my kids. 
Actually, I'm still this still young. <laughs> Okay. Okay, good. <coughs> okay. tax title firm that we've uh, that the treasurer collector's office has secured and uh, you know, tends to work closely with Paul to um, obviously we, we know the finance committee there's a significant amount of money that's owed to our town that's uh, upstanding receivables and uh, he was very hopeful that they have um, uh, some good plans in place to kind of putting things into different buckets to prioritize it getting things uh, onto tax title that isn't on tax title. And then, um, you know, the, the big issue of the suits, they have a plan for the suit property and, and sort of uh, the priority of that. But I mean, it's, it's significant. It's, you know, 10% of our receivables, if you will, for a round number. Um, but there's some other bigger things that we can actually go and, and they have a, they believe that are, are good opportunities for us and for them to, to go and collect for us. And, I mean, they're aggressive collectors, that's what we want. Um, you know, that's the town's money that we've, we've paid for, or, you know, that the town's paying for. Uh, so hopefully good things will come of that and, you know, they'll keep us apprised as the, as it goes on, but wanted to mention that. Um, is there anything else that you mentioned? That's all I can think of. We'll be back here next Monday anyway, I'm sure if there's something else. On Thursday, so on Thursday, the... Subcommittee. Subcommittee for town hall. Yes. Is the town hall and library together? No, we met with the library right, prior right, to. Okay, right. so it's just the town hall. Uh, like I said, Administrative Gordon's going to try to make sure that um, but all the right people. it's not all, everyone in town hall, right? So no, it's, it's just, not. Oh, it's just the list from, from the beginning. Um, yeah, I think Tim was arranging who was going yeah, to be at those the, meetings. I don't think it was the financial. Not the financial department. Oh, but I, I don't want to jump on your toes. So. Yeah. Have any of the subcommittees? <laughs> met with their departments yet? Uh, we met with fire. We've been trying to schedule something with police in EMS, but I haven't heard from Mike, so <laughs> any, Mike could reach out. Any feedback or things you want to share with the committee at this point? Or um, just wait no, because we're going we're gonna to meet one more time just to kind of work things out and have a nice thing for you. Okay, good. good. <laughs> It'll be really pretty. Oh, I'll just <laughs> make sure I give you the opportunity. Um, all right, I got nothing else for us for tonight. Did you, were you going to talk about the drive, just getting access to the drive? Or? I figured we could do that offline. Okay. I don't think the people at home need to. <laughs> <laughs> well, the people in the room. Uh, it is Mike. <gasps> yep. All right, we're ready to start, right? <laughs> hey, Mike, I have your meeting minutes. <laughs> go ahead, Pete. Go away from um, sit down. I'm going to do one motion, make a motion now. <laughs> <laughs> so you can write it down. <laughs> Well, I just saw, so our next meeting, again, is, is next Monday, the 11th, and then we'll be off on the 18th and back here on the 25th, during this watching. And we'll make sure that, uh, I guess there's some issues, we'll make sure our meetings get posted on the town website that they're happening, but they will be happening on the 11th and the 25th. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Any more discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? <laughs> <laughs> Good night.